Even though sometimes it feels like NFL stars are these untouchable gods, the truth is, none of us are invincible. And today, we're looking at some moments throughout NFL history where we were reminded of this sobering fact. Our top story tonight, two people arrested in connection with robbing Patrick Mahomes. We've seen a number of notable NFL players over the years find themselves knocking on death's door, only to be saved by some grand miracle. So today, we're going to take a look back at some of the craziest stories about NFL players who almost died. Losing the first guy on our list would have really changed the landscape of the NFL, considering what an integral player he is to his team, and really the entire league. We're talking about none other than Patrick Mahomes. Back when he was a rookie on the Chiefs, aka before he was widely regarded as the best player in the NFL, Patrick Mahomes was still a rather high profile individual. People knew he'd been taken early in the NFL draft, and he had compiled a nice bit of cash already. This resulted in THE Patrick Mahomes, along with three other people he was out with, being robbed at gunpoint in Smith County, Texas. The perp approached them and gestured towards his waistband indicating that he had a gun, and after the initial shock passed over, Mahomes and the three others coughed up their belongings and the suspect fled in a vehicle. Thank God no one was hurt, but that was definitely a scary situation for the Kansas City Chiefs quarterback. I'm just glad that me and my friends are safe and that uh, the, the cops uh, got the suspects. Patrick Mahomes was not the only MVP quarterback to find himself in harm's way. One of his fellow signal callers, Cam Newton, has also had a close encounter with the Grim Reaper. Cam had however, did not find himself at the mercy of an armed stranger, but rather fate, as he had a horrifying car crash back in December of 2015. Cam was driving along South Church Street, near a notoriously dangerous intersection in Charlotte, and he reportedly tried to maneuver around a driver that had pulled out in front of him. This was not some sort of minor fender bender though. Cam's massive truck rolled over flipping across the road multiple times. And after the collision had finally settled, Cam's vehicle was left lying in the middle of the road, which in a bizarre way was actually pretty lucky. Here's how Tommy Tomlinson, a former Charlotte Observer columnist who was familiar with the area, explained it. The wreck happened on a bridge with a steep embankment that feeds down to one of Charlotte's busiest highways. If his truck goes down that embankment, it's a lot worse. Thank God it didn't, and really, for as scary as the entire scene looked, it played out just about as well as it could have. People went from thinking that Cam might have died, others believed that he had broken both legs and that his season and maybe even his career were in jeopardy. But in the end, we were all shocked to see Cam somehow smiling on the sidewalk, unscathed, and then to watch him play later that season. It was really a miraculous turn of events. And Cam back just like a dozen days after a car accident. He's got those two cracks in his back. Cam. But this is what's returned to his game, Prime. Unfortunately, not everyone's mishaps with their automobiles had happy endings. In November 2016, just one week before Asaya Peed's first child, Asaya Jr., was born, Peed was in a severe car accident that not only ended his playing career, but also cost him his left leg. According to ESPN, his 2011 Cadillac CTS-V caught a nasty divot in the road and spun off the path, plunging through the guardrail and plummeting down an embankment at least 40 feet. He nearly bled to death, underwent emergency surgery, and spent two days in critical condition. He also suffered three completely torn ligaments in his right knee. This story is not all tragic though, as P does seem determined to make the best of a pretty brutal situation. He explained this to the Columbus Dispatch. I didn't ever cry. I'm not the type of person to feel sorry for myself. I've overcome a lot of things in my life. I just wondered how I could somehow get back into competitive sports. Track was the first thing that came to mind. Peed also told ESPN following the crash, My dream is done, but I'm still young. Have my whole life ahead of me. What's next? What do you want to be remembered for? And honestly, that's a pretty phenomenal perspective to have on everything, considering how he could have taken the situation. He has since become heavily involved with the Paralympics, and while his plans to compete in the 2020 event was derailed by the pandemic, he is a tremendous role model for people learning to handle adversity.
While the outcome was clearly different, Pede's accident was not all that dissimilar from what we saw happen with Big Ben Roethlisberger way back in the early days of his career. Some of our younger fans may not know this, but way back before Ben Roethlisberger was the burly veteran that he is today, he actually had a nasty auto accident that nearly cost him his life. Unlike Newton, this incident took place during the offseason, but it also had the added element of taking place on a motorcycle and not a truck, which definitely raises the stakes in terms of danger. Ben apparently does not remember much about the accident, but the reports state that he accidentally rammed his motorcycle into a car that was making a left turn in front of him on a street in Pittsburgh. And to make things worse, he wasn't wearing a helmet. You sometimes wear it, but you sometimes don't wear it. Correct. Why would you not wear it all the time? Um, well, because it's you know, it's, it's one of those choices that I make. I'm not breaking the law in Pennsylvania by not wearing a helmet. While his actual memory of the event is foggy, he did recount what the people at the scene told him to Jim Rome. They actually told me that I was literally seconds, maybe a minute away from dying because I slid a, a, um, a vein or artery in my, in my mouth, in my throat, and it was draining blood right into my stomach. And luckily, the paramedic noticed it and got and stopped it, or else I would have had too much blood in my stomach. Following the crash, Roethlisberger had to endure over seven hours of surgery as doctors repaired his broken jaw and a few other facial fractures. Luckily, his tests showed no serious brain injuries beyond a mild concussion. But he did lose a couple of teeth in the crash. I can only imagine what the fan hysteria would have been like if this had taken place during the social media era. People were already going ballistic about this crash, especially because Ben was not wearing a helmet. And man, would have it gotten even crazier. Kind of like how it got crazy for Earl Thomas when he had his, uh, well, let's say interesting story in which he really tested fate. WJZ is following breaking news this morning. TMZ is reporting the life of Raven safety. Earl Thomas held a gun to his head after learning of an alleged affair. The Earl Thomas saga was much more recent, and to say that it went pretty damn viral would be a massive understatement. It's actually kind of crazy to think about what a spectacle it became, especially considering how dangerous the situation turned. This story was first brought to public attention shortly after the police responded to a call about a domestic disturbance in the wee hours of the morning around 3.40 a.m. on April 13th, 2020. Much to the surprise of the police officers responding to the call, this was not just any ordinary domestic disturbance. When they arrived, they saw a woman wielding a knife chasing a shirtless man with a pistol in his hand around the house. And much to their surprise, the man in question was Earl Thomas, a Pro Bowl safety who had found himself in a predicament like they could have never believed. As it turns out, the 31-year-old Thomas told police that he had gotten romantically involved, wink wink nod nod, with a woman and he had stormed out of a fight with his wife Nina to go spend the night with the other woman at a rental property. A foolproof strategy for Thomas. The only problem was that his wife had him tracked on Snapchat. And after stewing in her anger for a couple hours, she grabbed her sister, Kayla Bayham Heiser, and the two women stormed the gates of the rental property. Where it really got scary for Earl was when Nina got so incensed that she actually took his pistol from their home and held him at gunpoint while she accosted him. Earl's mistress told the police that she threatened her and another woman, who was there with Earl's brother, Seth. She even shouted at them, I got something for all you hoes. The entire situation was a precursor to a Mori episode, only with a superstar athlete and a very violent twist. Just keep us in y'all prayers, and uh, stuff like this happens, bro. You know, I, we try to live the best lives we possibly can, but sometimes it don't go as planned. Uh, just pray for us, you know, as we go through this stuff. Gunplay has been an issue for other NFLers too, like Plaxico Burris and Joey Porter, both of whom had some pretty scary run-ins with firearms. Almost everyone knows about Plaxico's infamous self-shooting incident. Man, put that down. Come on, Chatter. Okay, all right. Ahead of the shooting, the Giants were 10-1, and, and they were looking dangerous heading towards the postseason. Burris was out at a New York City nightclub, LQ, and the Glock pistol he had in his pocket accidentally went off. 
Apparently, he had reached into his pocket and inadvertently hit the trigger, and the giants ended up releasing Burris as the subsequent legal proceedings stemming from the incident also took longer than expected. Joey Porter, on the other hand, found himself at the mercy of another person who was wielding a gun. This was way back in 2003, Porter's rookie year. He was wounded by a gunshot outside of a Denver bar just before the season was about to start. Luckily, it somehow only caused him to miss two games, which, to me, seems pretty impossible. Jimmy Smith, a longtime member of the Baltimore Ravens, the rival organization to Pittsburgh where Porter played most all the prime years of his career, recently had a terrifying run-in with an armed individual as well. While he didn't end up taking any lead into his flesh like Porter, it was scary for a different reason. The 32-year-old Smith was actually with his family at the time, adding a whole new element of terror for the Ravens cornerback. Baltimore Ravens cornerback Jimmy Smith and his family were robbed at gunpoint Tuesday night. It happened in Los Angeles when they left the airport heading to their hotel. Smith says they were followed for 40 miles to that hotel and then robbed by three men. The team says Smith and his family are now safe. No, not all the near-death experiences that NFL players run into happen off the field, though. There have actually been quite a few close calls that have resulted from the action on the field. Now, most people would probably point to what happened with Alex Smith, as his nasty broken leg nearly turned deadly due to an onslaught of infections and surgeries. And apparently it got so bad that he nearly had to have the leg amputated. He has since retired but he did somehow make it back to the gridiron for a bit of in-game action in 2020, which uh, is more than pretty much anyone expected when they saw him go down back in 2018, or when the news started to leak out about how long the recovery was taken. Smith is not alone in having disaster strike on an NFL field. Ricardo Lockett, the former Seahawks wide receiver, had an on-the-field moment that was almost fatal and nearly left him paralyzed. His injury came in 2016 when he suffered a brutal neck injury during a game against the Dallas Cowboys. It was so bad that doctors spent over five hours in surgery just trying to stabilize the area around the trauma. I can't feel... I can't feel anything. I could just move my eyes. While Lockett was lucky to survive, with his faculties intact no less, he was forced into an early retirement and has since started working as an advocate for player safety in the NFL, a very noble cause. So it is good to see him making the best of a challenging situation. But hey, what about you? Which do you think was the craziest instance of an NFL player almost dying? Join us in the comments section below. If you liked this video and learned a thing or two, clicking the like button helps out a ton. And hey, we appreciate it. If this is your first time coming around to TPS though, subscribing is a great idea because we put out videos like this every single day. But as always, thanks for watching and we'll see you guys next time.